you know, you could literally be on top of the world and be completely nowhere in in, in a matter of such a short time. You know, um, that that's a lot of pressure, and and that's a huge psychological barrier. In 2001, you sold your car, and then you bought a ticket to Los Angeles. Yeah. That's a huge kind of risk. I mean, what were you originally planning to do to just support yourself? Was it, were you really going towards the performing arts when you came out to Los Angeles? Yeah. Was that your full intention, or you really had no idea? Well, I bought a one-way ticket, <laughs> so I, I I didn't plan for the going back part, and uh, I only had a suitcase with me, so I was traveling light. And um, I guess I just wanted to see what life was about, you know. And um, I probably would never recommend coming out here the way I did because it was so overwhelming and even naive, you know. Um, but that may have worked in my favor. I don't know. Um, but I remember it was like the first Saturday night in Hollywood and I was walking on, you know, the Walk of Stars, whatever. And, and I was just thinking like, wait a minute, if something happened to me right now, like who would call my family? You know what I mean? The, it just dawned on me that I didn't know a single person in LA. In terms of work, I did a lot of educational theater. My first two years here, I worked for three different companies and we went out to all these LA public schools and we did shows for kids. And it ranged from history of civil rights to life of Martin Luther King Jr. to, you know, um, family communications, safe sex, you know. So it was basically from like kindergarten all the way to eighth grade. A theater company uh, here in LA were sending out some uh, references or recommendations saying, you know, this show on CBS is looking for a couple of actors. Uh, we just want to kind of let people in our community know that. And I was like, hmm. So how does this work? So I somehow get the audition, and I've never gone to an audition before for, for film and TV. So I go, and, uh, and lo and behold, I recognize some of the other actors in the waiting room, you know, reading for different parts, you know, for the same show. I'm like, God, oh, that, I remember that guy from that movie in high school, you know, and, and so it was, the whole experience was sort of surreal, you know. So I go in and do my thing, and three days later, they call me back to now do the same thing in front of the producers. So I do that, and then I get a call. I said, they want to cast you, James, you know? I'm like, oh, that's, wow, that's really cool. Um, I'm not in the union. I think what has worked in my favor, again, is that I didn't necessarily move to L.A. to try to make it in the business. You know, I think a lot of people come here with that goal, and it's very daunting, uh, very disappointing. Uh, the reality of this business is really harsh. Um, you know, stats-wise, I think there's about a quarter million people here that are trying to do this. And no other city in the world has that type of concentration of people aspiring to be in one profession, you know. So it's, uh, the city has its own reality, and, you know, the business can really suck you in and spit you out. You know, obviously, uh, I think television and film will continue to be in my life. But um, I think going back to the stage, you know, would be nice. And, uh, you know, there, there are other things that are sort of happening in my life that, that I may organic, you know, organically incorporate, you know, whether that's creating some kind of positive content or uh, exploring, writing, you know, even just for myself. Uh, I may go back to school, you know, just to be a student again, you know, I wouldn't mind that. So uh, we will see. Is there anyone you're seeing right now? <laughs> um, yeah, I guess I'm just, um, uh, I'm just, uh, that's what I'm doing. I'm just, I'm just seeing people, you know. Um, I, I, I've been in a relationship the past three years in a sort of a back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back kind of process. So uh, I think it's okay to have some self-time for a while. And, you know, right now it's not really a priority, you know, but, uh, but yeah, there's nothing wrong with, you know, connecting with cool people that you enjoy hanging out with, so. <laughs> <laughs> For me, a uh, sense of humor is huge, personality is huge, intelligence is huge, 
and um, yeah, I mean, of course, she's beautiful, she's cute, she's healthy, uh, all of those are pluses, uh, but I think the first three are sort of a must for me, you know, um, and we live in a city where a lot of people are aesthet aesthetically pleasing to the eye, so, um, you know, that sort of wears off pretty fast. But, um, yeah, uh, if I can laugh and have a great time, you know, and, and, and it's a stimulating conversation, I think that's already halfway there, you know, so, and I've, I've met some really great people, you know, the past few years. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I also read I'm blushing. Yeah. <laughs>